Today we're looking at the criminally underrated impact of 21 players across the NBA. Before continuing, only 28.1% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you're not in that percentage, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. One of three Sixer players to grace this list, Danny Green was quietly first in defensive rating among all shooting guards last year. A three-time NBA champion with three different franchises, the man's labeled as the luckiest player in NBA history. While that may be the case, Green doesn't get the credit he deserves for his 3 and D impact on those championships. It's not purely a coincidence the guy has three rings. Due to the fact that he's a ball brother, Lonzo may get his fair share of attention. Plus, he just got an 80 plus million dollar contract. So why is he on this list? Well, I've seen many people calling this man overpaid and overhyped. But to me, it's the opposite. Even people who think they're aware of his contributions don't know how truly valuable Ball is. If you ask most people, I think they'd say that Lamelo was easily the best Ball brother and it shouldn't even be a discussion. Maybe that opinion would change if they knew that Lonzo ranked third in the NBA among point guards in real plus minus, right behind Steph and Dame. The only superstar on this list, the brow now known as street clothes, Anthony Davis still fails to get the respect he deserves. Yes, Davis is pretty injury prone, but to his credit, he always regains form. When AD's 100%, he proved during the 2020 playoffs how dominant he is. He was consistently getting hurt last season, but based off his 33 point opening night performance, the brow's back. I've said it before, but the label just suits Drew Holiday. He's the best guard defender in basketball. We think of Giannis and Middleton's captainship when talking about the Bucks' first title in 50 years, but Drew's strip and lob to Giannis down the stretch in Game 5 on the road defined his impact. Drew's a timely player on both ends of the floor who the Bucks couldn't win without. It feels like Trey Young's partner in crime, John Collins, has been a premier big man for ages now. Somehow Collins just turned 24 years old. Already, the man's posted three seasons where he's averaged at least 17 and 7. In my opinion, he didn't get enough credit for the Hawks getting to the East Finals. When Trey's blitzed, he's always had a reliable scoring big he can toss it to. Last year, Collins was number 6 in real plus minus among power forwards, one of three players in the top 10 of that advanced stat who's never been an all-star. The LA Clippers are synonymous with names like Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. Reggie Jackson went from a role player during the regular season for the Clips to one of the go-to scores in their playoff run to the conference finals. Bobby Schmurda averaged 18 points on 48% from the field and 40% from three in that postseason. DeJounte Murray's the name that comes to mind when you think about the Spurs young talent. While DeJounte's great, Keldon Johnson's potential rise to stardom rarely gets mentioned. He's a versatile, explosive wing player who only needs to improve his jumper to break out. Since he didn't get the extension that Chris Paul promised he'd get and posted 16 and 12 on 66% shooting in the Suns' run to the finals, DeAndre Ayton had to be mentioned today. We all immediately think about the contributions from CP3 and D-Book, but the Suns would have gone nowhere if it wasn't for the rebounding phenom and low post beast in DeAndre Ayton. Without Robert Williams' lob catching, weak side rim protection, and screen setting, the Celtics wouldn't have come up two wins from the finals in 2020. RW3's athleticism in the pick and roll next to Tatum and Brown causes massive problems for defenders. I feel like everyone forgets about this man's impact on one of the biggest threats in the East year in year out. And at 24, Robert still has a ton of upside. He's been on a bottom-feeding Pistons team and a James Hardenless Rocket squad, so Christian Wood hasn't had the chance to get the attention he deserves on a winning team. The multi-talented big who features polished guard skills in his offensive resume quietly posted 21 points and 10 rebounds on efficient shooting last season. Christian's an excellent building block for the young Rockets, and he's extremely under the radar. John Morant's gotten every bit of the spotlight in Memphis, and rightfully so. But the Memphis Grizzlies' second scoring option was DeLon Brooks, who relieved the defensive pressure by posting a cool 17.2 points per night last year. My fellow Toronto-born Mandem can create shots at an extremely undervalued level. On the other side of the basketball, Brooks was an elite stopper on the wing for the Grizz. 
Another Grizzlies player from last year in Jonas Valanciunas was traded to the Pelicans for Steven Adams. Valanciunas had the highest player efficiency rating on the Grizzlies by far, and the fourth highest rating among centers behind the aforementioned RW3. Ranking number four in real plus minus last year was debatably the most underrated guard of all time, Mike Conley. The Jazz point guard's health through the 82-game grind in postseason means everything to the top-seeded Jazz. Conley needs to be there to relieve Donovan Mitchell of some playmaking responsibility. Raptor fans know how good OG is, but the fact that he's never made an all-defensive team and fails to get the attention he deserves among casual fans proves that OG's criminally underrated. On my second channel, I just made a video on OG, so go check that out after this. Like OG, Dante DiVincenzo missed out on his team's championship run in the playoffs because of injury. The Bucks chose recently not to extend Dante, and those two things are a massive disappointment considering DiVincenzo was a big-time role player for Milwaukee during the season. The Warriors showed off excellent ball movement last night, and despite Steph Curry having a rough shooting night, he did have a triple-double though, Golden State still took care of business on the road. One of the biggest reasons for that was Damian Lee, who dropped 15 points and showed off how great of an off-ball cutter he is. He also showed off his high IQ. Also, for the last couple of years, he shot around 40% from three. The newest Dallas Mavericks center, Moses Brown, spent last year in OKC posting a 20-20 game and 1.1 blocks per night in just 21 minutes each outing. He's not the quickest at guarding the perimeter, but he should be a valuable screen setter and board getter for the Mavs. Quietly one of 2021's most valuable paint protectors, the Knicks center Nerlens Noel ranked number two in the NBA last season in defensive box plus minus, earning a place recently in my Lockdown Defenders video. The elite sniper returning to the Alamo City, Bryn Forbes, is ready to space the floor for the Spurs' young core. When he faces Milwaukee, Bryn's going to receive his first career championship ring. Tobias Harris is one of our league's most talented players who's never been selected to an all-star team. He's a proficient stretch four who can create shots off the dribble in ways that resemble a prime Carmelo Anthony. Toby's averaged at least 17 points per game in seven different seasons throughout his career. He's truly one of this generation's most underrated bucket getters. Finally, Sixer player number three to grace this list is Seth Curry. We hear all about Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons, but they've got an incredibly underrated supporting cast. Seth Curry was exceptional last spring in Philly's playoff run. In the East semis, Curry played 34 minutes per game, poured in 21 points on average in those seven outings, and shot 60% from the field and from deep. Let me know who I forgot in the comments or who your favorite player on this list is. The NBA is back, y'all. Stay tuned for some more juicy content. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.